Good morning, everybody. Welcome to the Lord's house this morning. It's a beautiful, sunny day and a great day to worship our great God. Uh, welcome to all of our school families here. It's great to see, see it. God's house so full. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm Vicar Jared, and I'm joined by Pastor Kale and Seminarian Luke. And uh, we're going to start with our opening hymn. So one of the things we do at the beginning of service all the time is we begin, begin by confessing our sins and receiving forgiveness of God, from God. So if you would rise with me, <clears throat> we're going to begin our service in the name of our God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. 
Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O oh, Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a sinful being. Upon this your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue with our psalm. I will extol you, O Lord, for you have drawn me up and have not let my fo foes rejoice over me. O Lord, my God, I cried to you for help, and you have healed me. O Lord, you have brought up my soul from Sheol. You restored me to life from among those who go down to the pit. Sing praises to the Lord. O oh, you his saints, and give thanks to his holy name. For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. Weeping may tarry for the night, but joy comes with the morning. As for me, I said in my prosperity, I shall never be moved. By your favor, O oh Lord, you made me stand strong. You hid your face. I was dismayed. To you, O Lord, I cry, and to the Lord I plead for mercy. What profit is there in my death if I go down to the pit? Will the dust praise you? Will it tell of your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and be merciful to me. You have turned for me my mourning into dancing. You have loosed my sackcloth and clothe me with gladness, that my glory may sing your praise and not be silent. O Lord my God, I will give thanks to you forever. Please be seated. Uh, usually at this time we would do our Kyrie and our Gloria, but we actually have some people to sing that for us today, which is really exciting. I'm going to invite all of our school kids up to do some of our songs from the musical.
More of that at Metro East 4 and 7 this coming Saturday, so you are all invited. Uh, there's no admissions charge, but there is a free will offering at the door, so come out and join us on Saturday. Uh, we continue now with prayer, and I think since we're going to sit right back down afterwards, we'll just stay seated for prayer this morning. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Oh God, through the humiliation of your Son, you raised up the fallen world. Grant to your faithful people, rescued from the peril of everlasting death, perpetual gladness and eternal joys. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue now with our readings. And our first reading for this weekend, uh, and the book that we're on this week, is uh, the book of Acts, and we're looking at chapter 13. So Paul stood up, and motioning with his hand, he said, Men of Israel... And you who fear God, the God of this people, Israel, chose our fathers and made the people great during their stay in the land of Egypt. With an uplifted arm, he led them out of it. And for about 40 years, he put up with them in the wilderness. After destroying seven nations in the land of Canaan, he gave them their land as an inheritance. And all this took about 450 years. And after that, he gave them judges until Samuel the prophet. And then they asked for a king, and God gave them Saul, the son of Kish a man of the tribe of Benjamin, for forty years. And when he had removed him, he raised up David to be their king, of whom he testified and said, I have found in David, the son of Jesse, a man after my own heart, who will do all my will. Of this man's offspring, God has brought to Israel a Savior, Jesus, as he promised. Before his coming, John had proclaimed a baptism of repentance to all the people of Israel. And as John was finishing his course, he said, What do you suppose I am? I am not he, no, but behold, after me is one is coming, the sandals of whose feet I am not worthy to untie. Brothers, the sons of the family of Abraham, and those who fear among you who fear God, to us has been sent the message of salvation. For those who live in Jerusalem and their rulers, because they did not recognize him or understand the utterances of the prophets, which are read every Sabbath, fulfilled them by condemning him. And though they found in him no guilt worthy of death, they asked Pilate to have him executed. And when they had carried out all that was written of him, they took him down from the tree and laid him in a tomb. But God raised him from the dead. 
And for many days he appeared to those who had come up with him from Galilee to Jerusalem, who are now his witnesses to the people. And we bring you the good news that what God promised to the fathers, this he has fulfilled to us, their children, by raising Jesus, as also it is written in the second psalm, You are my son, today I have begotten you. And as for the fact that he raised him from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken in this way, I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. Therefore he also said in another psalm, You will not let your holy one see corruption. For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, fell asleep and was laid with his fathers and saw corruption. But he whom God raised up did not see corruption. Let it be known to you, therefore, brothers, that through this man forgiveness of sins is proclaimed to you, and by him everyone who believes is freed from everything from which you could not have been freed by the law of Moses. Beware, therefore, lest what is said in the prophets should come about. Look, you scoffers, be astounded and perish. For I am doing a work in your days, a work that you will not believe, even if one tells it to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our epistle reading comes from Revelation chapter 5 this morning. John writes, When he had taken the scroll, the four living creatures and the twenty-four elders fell down before the Lamb, each holding a harp and golden bowls full of incense, which are the prayers of the saints. And they sang a new song, saying, Worthy are you to take the scroll and to open its seals. For you were slain, and by your blood you ransomed people for God from every tribe and language and people and nation. And you have made them a kingdom and priests to our God, and they shall reign on the earth. Then I looked and I heard around the throne and the living creatures and the elders the voice of many angels, numbering myriads of myriads and thousands of thousands, saying with a loud voice, Worthy is the Lamb who was slain to receive power and wealth and wisdom and might and honor and glory and blessing. And I heard every creature in heaven and on earth and under the earth and in all the sea and all that is in them, saying, To him who sits on the throne and to the Lamb be blessing and honor and glory and might forever and ever. And the four living creatures said, Amen. And the elders fell down and worshipped. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As you're able, please rise for the Alleluia. 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 The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 21st chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. After this, Jesus revealed himself again to the disciples by the Sea of Tiberias, and he revealed himself in this way. Simon Peter, Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Canaan in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Simon Peter said to them, I'm going fishing. They said to him, we will go with you. They went out and got into the boat, but that night they caught nothing. Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to them, children, do you have any fish? They answered him, no. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it, and now they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. The disciple whom Jesus loved, therefore, said to Peter, It is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and threw himself into the sea. The other disciples came in the boat, dragging the net full of fish, for they were not far from land, but about a hundred yards off. When they got out on the land, they saw a charcoal fire in place, with fish laid out on it and bread. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore, full of large fish, 153 of them. And although there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, Come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared ask him, Who are you? They knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them, and so with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus was revealed to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, feed my lambs. He said a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. He said to him, tend my sheep. He said a third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? 
Now Peter was grieved because he had said to him a third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Truly, truly, I say to you, when you were young, you used to dress yourself and walk wherever you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands, and another will dress you and carry you where you do not want to go. This he said to show by what kind of death he was going to glorify God. And after saying this, he said to them, Follow me. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Having heard God's word, we make confession of our faith together in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Please be seated for our sermon hymn. Grace and peace to you from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our sermon text for today is the first reading that we read from Acts chapter 13. Dear Christian friends, there is perhaps no greater joy in my life right now than my little niece, Ellie. Every time I return back to my hometown, 
I'm always able to spend quality time with her, especially because her mother is working in the afternoons. So we watch her while she's off working. But the best part about being her uncle, and really the best part about being an uncle in general, is that you get all of the playtime without any of the hard work. I'm seeing some nodding heads. Yes, it is the best. So Ellie and I, we love to dance together, explore together, laugh together. But perhaps our favorite thing that we do together is play with her many, many toys. Now, she has several different toys, and they're all, for, they're all aimed at the age of about two years old, maybe a little bit younger. That's about how old she is. And one of the favorites that we play with is, at least in my opinion, it's the shapes sorting toy. Uh, now, now, if you haven't experienced this toy that I have in mind, it's pretty simple. So you start off, you have like a hollow cube about this large. It's not too big, but it's a wooden hollow cube. And in, and in the cube, there are slots in various different shapes, whether that be a square, a circle, a rectangle, a triangle, you get the idea. And with this cube, this hollow cube, come solid smaller blocks. And those solid smaller blocks are in the shapes of the cutouts on the cube. So you can fit the oval block into the oval cutout and slide it into the hollow block. And then once you've put all the shapes in, there's a top that comes off and then you can take them all out and do it all again. And uh, this is just supposed to teach little toddlers about their shapes. Well, I remember distinctly, not too long ago, uh, probably just a month ago, the two of us were playing, and we were playing with a shape sorting toy, but she had discarded it, so I was going to clean up and put all the shapes back into the block, but I put them into their slots. It only took me about a minute to get all of them in, and then I had one left, and this block was a large square block. So I looked around the, uh, the hollow cube, and I found the square slot, and I tried to put it in, but it wouldn't fit in. What I did not know is that this large cube that I was trying to place inside the wooden hollow cube came from a different toy set. I spent the next three minutes looking around the hollow cube trying to fit this small cube into it. After about three or five minutes, I went up to my mom and she said, Luke, this is from a different toy set. I felt pretty foolish, but what I, did, what I didn't really realize, no matter what I did, that block was never going to fit because it was bigger and it just wasn't part of the toy set. Um, no, matter how, no matter how many times I tried, there was simply no way it was going to fit. In our lives in general, we constantly are taking in various things from the outside, whether that be um, things in our work, things in our relationships, just everything in our lives. And we're trying to make sure that they fit into our lives in some manner. Uh, perhaps they don't fit and that's okay, but we're trying to figure out how they fit. Today we're looking at the book of Acts in our Bible in a Year series. And if you didn't get a chance to read it or listen to the podcast, let me fill you in on some of the details. Acts is a very unique book to the whole of the New Testament in that it recounts the church history in the following decades right after Christ's death and resurrection. We really don't have any other documents that talk to us about this time. And most of the book specifically centers around Paul. He was the one who was converted on the road to Damascus. He was formerly Saul. And it, it centers around him and his various missions to Europe and Asia Minor. And our reading from today is one of his missions that he's doing to Antioch in Pisidia. And that is somewhere located in the western part of modern-day Turkey. In, in our lesson, Paul goes through a long history of the Jewish people. Starting with the forefathers who were enslaved at the hand of Pharaoh in, in Egypt. And then he moves through the period of the judges. And then after the judges, there came the kings. And then finally, after the kings and after the exile too, they now come to Jesus Christ. Because this is the whole story of the Jewish people. And the story of the Jews uh, that Paul moves through is very majestic. And it specifically is majestic because it always shows how God has had a hand in the whole of their history. 
It was God who uplifted them out of Egypt. It was God who gave them the land of Canaan as an inheritance. It was God who chose Saul first as their king, and then God who chose David as their king. Simply put, the complete story of the Jewish people, it really isn't their story. It's God's own story. But the story of God that Paul is giving to these Jewish people in Antioch, it's not one that is not without its turmoil. Remember, this is the whole story of God. So it includes the work of Jesus Christ when he was here on this earth. And when Jesus Christ came to this earth, the Jewish leaders and rulers who knew about the entire story of God, they rejected Christ as part of it. And thus they rejected the climactic part of the story. For those Jewish leaders in Jerusalem, they did not see Christ as fitting in to the story that, of, of God that they had perceived. They rebelled against God and they rejected his son and the revelation of his son and they condemned him to death on a tree. And they did that because they did not recognize him nor understand the utterances of the prophets. These utterances of the prophets were things they were reading every Sabbath day. The irony just kind of drips off the page as those very Jews who are part of the story of God are now the ones who rejected the fulfillment of it. They were given the outside input that was Christ, and they rejected him, saying that he wasn't going to fit in to their story. In our world today, I suspect that we too reject Christ, but we do it not exactly in that manner. Here, let me explain. I want you to imagine for a second that the pipe under your sink has just burst and there's water going all throughout your house. The first thing you do is you go turn off the water main, but after you go turn off the water main, you do the next logical thing and you call a plumber because you don't have the tools or frankly the skills to fix the pipe yourself. So while you're waiting for what seems like an eternity, the plumber finally arrives and he walks in, he's got his toolbox full of tools. He uh, takes a knee right next to the pipe and he studies it for a little while. And then he digs around in his toolbox. He takes out a rather long wrench and then he gets to work meticulously fixing the pipe. Once he's finished fixing that pipe, he just takes that wrench that he was using, he puts it right back into his toolbox and then he goes on his way, knowing that that wrench, it's going to be there for when he needs it again. He's just going to have to go get his toolbox. Remember, we, we aren't really like, we as Christians aren't really like the Jews of Jerusalem. We don't just straight out reject Jesus, but we're Christians. We accept him as our Lord and Savior. That's what we call upon him as. Yes, the world continues to flat out reject him, but as Christians, we've fallen victim to rejecting him in a different way. We're like that plumber who came to fix the pipe in the house. We walk in with our big toolbox full of tools, and we take a long look at the various problems that are in our life. And after thinking about how best to fix these problems, we take a deep dive into our toolbox, trying to find the right tool that will make the right fit to fix that specific problem. These tools, they could be really a variety of things in your life, whether that be money, alcohol, gossiping, a whole other host of vices. But perhaps the tool in our toolbox that we use so often is God himself. Instead of us rejecting the story like those Jews in Jerusalem did, we take God and we place him into our own stories. God, the infinite creator of the universe and all and creator of all things in it, is reduced down to a tool that we can use to solve the problems in our lives. We use him as that tool where we correctly see him fitting. And once we've used him, 
We just take that tool that is God and we place him right back in the toolbox where we know he'll be for us when we need him again, but he's not going to be too overbearing on us. For us, God is just another one of those block shapes that we're trying to see where he fits into our lives. And once he is fitting into our lives, we're cool with it there and nothing more. What does God's story then do in response to all this? Well, first, let's go back to our reading from Acts. Remember, the Jews in Jerusalem, they reacted to the story of God by trying to put a stop on it. They didn't want the rest of it happening. They knew that if they crucified this Jesus, all this nonsense in the area would probably stop. So they crucified him. But despite their ignorance, and really despite their attempts, God's story pressed on. The attempts of men to foil the plan of the master of the universe, they were never truly going to work. No, Jesus Christ, rather, he willingly went to the cross in order to fulfill all the scriptures had said. Jesus went to the cross as the climax of God's entire story of salvation. First and foremost, for those very Jews that had crucified him. Christ is the fulfillment of all things up to that point in time, and he is the fulfillment of all things after that point in time. In his death and resurrection, he pronounced victory over sin, death, the devil, and the grave. But most importantly, he pronounced victory over the frailty of our human condition. God raised his own son from the grave, and then he appeared to many people all throughout the region. And those people, that's what we see in Acts, those people continue God's story by then spreading it to all the region and bringing it to the people who were there. And God's story ends with all the people of God coming to the city of God because we have been redeemed by Christ's blood. Believing in Jesus Christ brings forgiveness of sins to those very ones who nailed him to the tree. And I tell you, God's promises in Christ Jesus, in Christ Jesus extend to you today. God fulfilled his own story in Jesus Christ, ushering us into fellowship with him and his story. Even when we turn against God, Jesus welcomes us into fellowship with him. Paul says in verse 34 of our reading today this very thing. Listen to what he says. He says, And as for the fact that he was raised from the dead, no more to return to corruption, he has spoken in this way. I will give you the holy and sure blessings of David. The blessings of David are wonderful. David was called upon God to lead his people in Israel. David was brought up to be in fellowship with God. And he was called holy and blessed by all the people of the land. You too are holy and blessed in the sacrifice of of Christ Jesus. He brings you into fellowship with God as your Father, so that we do not need to look to God as some tool in our lives, but rather he's our safety and our stronghold, our comfort and our strength. You are ensured of the blessings of David when you participate in the Lord's Supper and when you hear his word and when you're reminded of your baptism. God blesses you by promising that you will have eternal life in him. And the best part about Christ welcoming us into fellowship with, with God is that he gives us a purpose in our lives and not the other way around. While we were trying to use God as a tool, utilizing him perhaps for our own selfish purposes, Jesus died on the cross so that we might have a purpose in God's cosmic story. And indeed, we do have a purpose in God's cosmic story. 
Just like Paul and all the rest of the apostles in the early church were called to spread the good news of Christ throughout all the world, Christianity cannot be contained to Bethalto, Illinois. The good news of Christ is to be spread to all corners of the earth because God himself has instructed us to do so. Being in seminary, I often get the question of, what is your favorite book of the Bible? And whenever I receive this question, I almost always answer the book of Acts. Now, aside from the fact that Acts was written by Luke, I like Acts because it answers the question of now what? We've all been justified by Christ Jesus through his death and resurrection. This is to be celebrated. But now what? What do we do because of that? And the book of Acts makes it very clear. We spread his word. We be a part of God's story, not of our own story. This is going to look weird to the world. It will look weird that you get up on Sunday morning and come to church when you could rather sleep in. It will look weird that you are completely selfless to your neighbor, taking their needs above your own needs. It will look weird to the world that you treat the money you've been given by God as a steward of his gifts. And this is all because Christianity is weird to the world. But I tell you today to embrace the weirdness. You have been redeemed by the God of the universe through the death of his son. And you were called into his story through the waters of holy baptism. Indeed, you are a perfect fit for God's story because he has said so. So embrace the weirdness, spreading his word to the nations, loving your neighbor as Christ loved us, and living out your role in the cosmic story of God. In the name of Jesus, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. We continue with the prayers of the church. we have a couple of new petitions to be added. Uh, first off, we pray for Sandy Podner, who's at St. Anthony's with health concerns. We also pray for Steve Searcy, a friend of Eric and Vicki Newneighbor, who has been diagnosed with cancer. And we pray a uh, prayer celebration for the birth of Car uh, Corinne Jamie Lynn. Please rise for prayers. Lord of life, we are sustained by the spiritual food you alone provide, and our lives depend on your powerful word. As you have gathered us here around the proclamation of your gospel, make us worthy to receive the bounty prepared for us in your son's death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Heavenly Father, you have raised your son from the dead to the praises of all angels and saints. Give strength to our hearts and voices that we, with them, would meditate on the glorious splendor of your majesty and speak of the might of your awesome deeds. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Ever living God, you raised up Saul from among your enemies that he would suffer for, suffer for your name, stir up all those baptized into your name, and call many men to the service of your church. Sustain all who suffer for your gospel and continue to confound your enemies with your wisdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious Lord, one generation of your saints commands, it commends your works to another. As we have received your glorious gospel, grant all fathers and, mong, uh, and, fathers and mothers among us, especially today, Terry and Muffy Dossett, Georgia Doyle, Paul and Mendy Draper, Alicia, Alicia and Andrew Dreith and family, Kate and Tyler Dreith and family, 
Caitlin and Doug Dreith and family, Karen and Joseph Drew and family, Gary and Tracy Dunn and family, Stephanie and Christopher Dijkstra and family, Don Earnshaw, strong and joyful faith to declare your mighty works to the generation to come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, enthroned in heaven, you have ordered all the nations of the earth and have set your church among them to shepherd them into eternal life. Hear the prayers we continually offer for our rulers and grant them faithful and peaceful rule, reign. Lord, in your mercy. Compassionate Lord, you, glorified in the, you are glorified in the sufferings of your faithful people. Teach us to trust you through all our trials and graciously bear up those who struggle among, among us. We pray today for Sandy Podner, Julia Ringering, James Langston, Flynn, Flynn Buchanan, Tracy Bollinger, Liz Buchanan, Joy Lotz, Cheryl Krause, Ann Belesteros, Ben Deering, Joan Barry, Hilmer Shainbaum, Janice Moore, Ray Brown, Cheryl Bedner, Ted Betcher, Wendy Osborne, Danny Wiesman, Myron Bollinger, Dolly Meininger, Tiffany Lubinsky, Kathy Sawyer, Bob Schaefer, Anna Mae Shainbaum, uh, all those in Ukraine, for Steve Searcy, for uh, Connie Leiter, for ben, Beth Thornburg, Roy Street, Emlyn Sellers, Rosella Thine, Laura Harmon, Kenna Lambert, Audrey Welch, Greg Newell, Brooke Carden, Ray Hiller, Bernadine Liefer, Tim Blaza, Jennifer Withrow, Gary Poe, Karen Atberry, Tony Goforth, Sandra Greenberg, Holly Johnson, Doris Schoburn, David Noblock, Jack Morton, Robert Guthrie, Jim Edwards, Bobby Cummins, Julie Morrow, Gordon and Shirley Abbott, Mary MD, Daryl Bertels, Pam Voyle, Steve Dorr, Dave Tainer, Nancy Dorr, Janet Pickering, Buzz Kindle, Luke Millard, Renee White, Shirley Jones, Collette Sawyer, Christy Morris, Coy Chafin, Heidi Reynolds, Rita Pickard, Brian Hale, Missy Wiesman, David Wilson, Levi Gott, Tegan Davis Holt, Cecil Thomason, and Diane Soretto, that they would know the fullness of your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Eternal Lord, you have prepared a feast again for us. Uh, on this morning of your son's resurrection. Help us to rejoice greatly in this gift of his body and blood and to receive it to our eternal good, that we too would rise at the last day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you are the source of all great blessings. Today we thank you for the blessing of another birth into your family, the birth of uh, Corinne Jamie Lynn. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again and now lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. All this and more we ask in the prayer you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Now receive this Lord's blessing. May the Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face shine on us and be gracious to us. The Lord look upon us with favor and give us his peace. Amen. You may be seated for our closing
Good morning once again, everybody. It was a blessing to be able to worship with all of you, and uh, once again, welcome to all of our school families. And let's take a second to give another round of applause to all of our school children who sang today. They did a great job, and that leads me into quite a few announcements, but great announcements. There's a lot of great things happening here at Zion. So first off, as we already said, uh, our school will be having a musical, and it's going to be taking place on Saturday, Saturday, April 7th. And there's going to be a 4 o'clock and a 7 o'clock. There's not any charge to get in the doors. Oh, May. Wait. Eight, eight, May? May. May 7th. Sorry. May 7th, and it will be uh, at 4 p.m. and 7 p.m. There's no cost to get in. It's a free will donation, so please come support the kids. Come hear a great musical as you got a little taste. It's going to be an incredible blessing to come and, and listen to. Uh, next up, the Bible in a Year gathering uh, that we have every month. We're going to have one today. It starts at 4 o'clock, so whether you've been listening to all the podcasts, reading through all the books of the Bible or not, feel free. Come on by. It's a great time. We get people to come by both ends of the spectrum. We talk about books of the Bible. We get to catch up with one another and share the blessing that is being in the body of Christ. Next up, uh, as Seminary and Luke said, we have the opportunity and the call to be weird in our faith, to serve, to go out and let people know what it means to be Christian and to be loved by God and love others. And, uh, well, we have an opportunity for that coming up. Next weekend, um, er, sorry, Yes, next weekend on May 7th, not April, May 7th, we are teaming up with Humanitry. So for those of you who might not know this, uh, as a vicar, both vicars prior to myself and, and myself included, we have a big project that we have to do. And uh, for, for my project, we have the opportunity to go and serve out in the community. It's a great chance for Zion to get out and, and be weird, be unique, and to show the love of Christ to others. So for this service project, we will be coming here uh, on the 7th at 9 o'clock, and we're going to carpool down to the Soulard area. We're going to have uh, a chance to fix up a house. It's going to include landscaping, painting, and general uh, home preparedness for another family to move in. If you've never heard of Humanitry like I hadn't prior to uh, the beginning of this year, please stick around. In our Bible study time for today, we're going to have a uh, a speaker, the executive director of Humanitry, Lori Holtgrieve, is going to give a talk. She's going to talk about what Humanitry does, how they started out, and why it's important that what they're doing is, well, important. It's, it's, it's good work, and it's a chance for us to team up with them to serve those who are in need and to, uh, to let people know that, that others care, even if it's complete strangers. So please, if you have time next weekend, come on by, help serve, and, and share God's word through, through our acts. Next up, uh, on May 14th, uh, sorry, April 14th, April 14th, May? I'm all turned around now. The Board of Fellowship is hosting a ladies' workshop and luncheon on Saturday, May 14th from 10.30 to 12.30. The topic of the workshop is visual prayer. Uh, visual prayer is a tool that results in a concrete, tangible prayer with an image to be recalled in prayerful moments during your day or given to, blessing, to bless someone as a gift of prayer. This resource was developed by Visual Faith Ministries. The ministry was co-founded by two wives of current LCMS district pastors. So if you're interested in coming to that, feel free to uh, sign up in the ministry center or go online, or you can even call the church office. And I have to go back for a second. I did miss. If you want to come and serve next weekend with Humanitry, there is a sign up in the ministry center as well. So feel free to put your name and number down there so we can get in contact with you for that. Uh, next up, Church in the Park is going to be May 22nd uh, at 1030 at the Bethalto Central Park. If you've never been to one of these, as I haven't, it's going to be a great time. From what I've heard, it's time we have one service. There's no Saturday service that weekend. So come on out, 1030, one service, and then stick around, bring your lawn chair. We're going to have food, fun, games, fellowship, all sorts of good stuff. Uh, if you do come, we ask that you bring a side, a dessert, something along those lines. Um, and then if you want, on May 21st, we have another service event. May 21st, we're going to have a work day for the uh, church in the park on May 22nd. So if you want to serve in that capacity, reach out to church properties for more information. 
And then we have two ministry wins. First off, if you guys didn't hear for, we had our, our call day just took place and uh, three people got called, one of which is sitting in this room seminary and Luke got called and he will do his vicarage at Living Savior Lutheran Church in Fairfax Station, uh, Virginia. Uh, Benjamin Hader, a vicarage two years ago, he got placed as a pastor of Zion Lutheran Church in Chibans, Illinois, so not too far away, somewhere near Chicago, I believe. And then Brandon Metcalf has been called here. Brandon Metcalf is going to be the associate pastor. He's going to be the associate pastor of family ministry, so we're going to welcome back Brandon, uh, Brandon, Dana, Benjamin, and Eliza. And then our last announcement, our last ministry win. Uh, we had 10 new adult confirmands confirmed last weekend, in addition to 12 student confirmands who were confirmed on Palm Sunday. So in the last like month and a half, 22 new members into the body of Christ. That's, that's great news, great ministry win. God's blessing, everybody.